If there is an author and illustrator of children's books working today worthy of Dr. Seuss's mantle, he is Mo Willems. His best-selling adventures for young readers include Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, along with his Elephant and Piggy series. Now the New York Historical Society has brought together original art, sketches, and drawings from his most popular books. And I was fortunate enough to meet him for a chat. Do you get a little emotional seeing them all hanging in one place? I do. I Every picture displayed at the New York Historical Society tells a story about Mo Willems. This is before we did stuff digitally. These are the actual cells. So but some of them, like how he created Elephant's Friend, Piggy, only he can bring to life. It was sort of an open casting call. I had a muskrat, I had a squirrel with a helmet, I had all different sort of sidekicks, and nothing really gelled. And then Piggy showed up, and she was so Piggy, and so sweet and so pure that she got cast, she got the role. I love that if I didn't know these were characters, I would think you were talking about real people. <laughs> they are, they are completely <laughs> real. His passion for characters started as a child growing up in New Orleans. The girl of my dreams. Willem says he was inspired by Charlie Brown, created by Charles Schultz. Charlie Brown's head is a circle. Snoopy is just sort of a jelly bean. So I just drew Charlie Browns and Snoopies every single day, and that's what made me want to be a cartoonist. When I was five, I wrote Charles Schultz a letter that said, Dear Mr. Schultz, can I have your job when you're dead? <laughs> and I just waited. And was there any response? No, no, my father never sent the letter. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Willems moved from New Orleans to New York to attend NYU's prestigious Tisch School of the Arts. By 24, he was performing sketch comedy while working at Sesame Street. His work over nine seasons earned him six Emmy Awards. When you left Sesame Street, did you think there's something about writing for kids that I love? No, it wasn't. I actually discovered it there. I think in the beginning when I got hired, I thought, oh, I'm doing sketch comedy. That's great. Kids schmids. Always what you want to hear from someone at right, Sesame well, Street. I mean, right? well, I was a young guy. <laughs> when I was started, but what I discovered, it really shocked me, was it's harder to write for kids. Because you don't have cultural modifiers. You can't reference bands or cultural experiences or whatnot. You're stuck with core, fundamental, philosophical thoughts. Anger, jealousy, that kind of thing. <laughs> Anger became the selling point for Willem's first best-selling character, simply drawn and simply named the Pigeon. I want to make sure that every lead character that I create can be reasonably copied by a five-year-old, and it will look like that character. His next breakthrough character was Knuffle Bunny, featuring a toddler named Trixie. The character was named and based on his real daughter, Trixie. She was two when the first book was published, and four when she voiced the character. Knuffle Bunny is all true. Now she's 15. You know, being the real Trixie is kind of contained in one part of my life. And then I go and I visit places like this and I'm suddenly at this museum where all my dad's stuff is being held. And I'm like, right, this is a thing. A thing parents and kids are willing to wait in long lines for. You want to hear a story? Yeah. Especially to hear Willems voice the characters from the final Elephant and Piggy book. We thank everyone. <laughs> It's called The Thank You Book, and this cover is the 25th in the series. Over the years, Piggy's ears have gotten bigger because she's aged, and Gerald's ears have gotten bigger and lower. I want to go back to projects that really freak me out, that I think, oh, can I do this? And then I can use that, that energy of being terrified to push myself to do something that hopefully will be meaningful. While the tour shows you all the effort behind Willem's seeming effortlessness, he says every book should look like anyone could have done it. I think that the, a mistake that people make is they think that ideas are things that you get like shoes, and they're not. Ideas are things that you grow. And every day you go back and you take your sketchbook and you're planting a little seed, and some of them just don't grow at all. And every now and then, one of those seeds slowly, slowly grows up and becomes a beautiful tree that bears fruit that you can cut down and burn for profit. <laughs> right? <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, you can see there, he is so incredibly thoughtful. One of the yes. things I asked him, is it the words that come first? Is it the drawings? And he says, he's such a minimalist. One could not exist without the other. Yeah, they should lean together. I have to say, his attention to detail reminded me a lot of you. <laughs> well, I, I love his philosophy that ideas are things that you grow, that they're, they're just, that you don't just, they're not just there. You have to work with them, and some of them don't grow. I gotta start planting. Yeah. It's time. We all gotta start planting. <laughs>